Okay, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, we talked about arrays. So we actually said that whenever you create an array somewhere, essentially you're, you, whenever you say something like this, whenever you say, for example, integer a, five, and then you set it to values like, say, 10, well, what the devil was that? 10, sorry, let me, how do you sit on these things? <laughs> okay, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. So I just initialized the values. So essentially when you do something like this, what we said was that when you actually, um, keep going up, when you actually uh, uh, create an array, what happens is that somewhere in memory, again, I'm going to use my artistic side of uh, the family. Uh, so uh, if this is the memory, and say each cell that I'm going to write over, uh, draw over here is going to be one integer, four bytes, let's assume that way. So essentially, this is the memory that you have. And you just requested that you want to have an array, an array of five integers. So, uh, so, so the OS, what it, uh, uh, the, the compiler requests for five integers, and what happens is that actually OS gives you some place in memory, oh, not like that. Uh, so gives you something like this somewhere in memory. It occupies one, two, three, four, five. Let's assume those are all equal, okay? So we have five integers over here set up. Essentially, this becomes your a0, a1, a2, a3, a4, correct? Now, that's not really what happens. It not only creates the, occupies that one, but what happens behind the scene is that somewhere else, actually, another piece of thing is allocated over here that is actually an, a pointer to an integer. So essentially, this, is the little a that you have. And what happens is that it actually gets that piece of memory, extracts its address, and puts that address in this pointer. So this a of yours actually points to the beginning of the array. So when in your code you actually mention something like a Two, what it does, it says from the address of the beginning of the, why well, it keeps going up, from the address of the beginning of the array that is kept over here, go two bytes, two integers further. That's one, that's two, so this becomes a two. And that's the reason that your index is always less than one, the, one of the, the sequence of the, uh, of the element array, uh, array elements that you have. So that's actually element number three, but the index becomes two. So if you want to see the first one, in here you're going to put a zero. And when you say a zero, essentially means from the address of the beginning, don't go further, just there. So this becomes a zero. That's why this is zero, this is one, this is two, this is three. And, and this is four. What a beautiful handwriting guy. Okay, do we understand that? Mm -hmm. All right, good. So that's how the arrays work. So we have no problem with that. Now, um, what happens when we actually pass an array to a function? What happens is quite uh, simple, actually. So when you actually create a, a function, let's say I want to have a function to print these things out. If I want to have something like that, if I want to pass these information into a function, what do I need to do? So say I have the function, and the function name is um, print ints. Okay. Now, the function doesn't return anything. And what do I pass to this thing? I'm going to say, OK, to be able to have access to all these elements, I can use exactly what the C language uses itself, which means if I had only this piece somewhere, then I could access everything, right? So what happens over here, you're going to say, I want to pass 
an array of integers over here. Let's call it ARR. But I only want the head. I don't want the tail. I don't want the body of the array. So you don't put anything in here. All right? And doing so, when you implement actually the, the array over here, yeah, the function, you're going to say print ints. Print ints, and in here you go int array, and you write something like this. What happens is that compiler, okay, let it be there because it keeps coming up. I have no idea why. I'm just going to leave it up there. So what the compiler does when you actually do something like this, and then you call the function. So when you actually say over here, print ints, And you put A. So what happens, it passes whatever inside A into ARR. And when the function is called, it actually creates an ARR. Now that's too long. I'm going to change that one to, say, B. Okay? So it passes that A into B. So essentially what you're going to have is this. Somewhere else in memory, somewhere else in memory, a, P, a, a pointer to integer will get occupied. And the name of that thing is going to be B. And the name of that thing is going to be B. Okay? Now, whatever's inside A, whatever's inside A is going to go into B. So the address that A holds, now B will hold it. As a result, B will point exactly to the same place that A is pointing. So in this function, whatever I do to this B is exactly what I'm doing to A. All right? So as a result, if in here I actually go for um, integer, integer I, then I go for I set to 0, I less than 5, and I plus plus, and in here I'll go printf percent D, and I'll put over here bi. Let's have a space between the things. And then after that, I'll go printf, printf new line. And uh, just new things we learn. Whenever you want to just print one character, don't use printf for it. OK. So whatever you do, Whatever you do over here, if you have only one character to print, if you have only one character to print, it's better to use the function that only prints one character. As a result, I told you I have eyes behind my head. So, so what you do, you, instead of printf, you can actually say put char, and you put a single character. It's not a string anymore. It's a single character. So put char prints one character, and that's it. All right? So that's what we're going to do. So what happens over here, if I run this program, we know that when I say int A5 and I initialize it 10, 20, 30, 40, this is 10, this is 20, this is 30, this is 40, and this is 50. So when I actually run this beautiful program of mine, what happens is that three years later, what happens is this. Let's actually do this. So it actually starts initializes A to all the values that it's supposed to, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Then it calls print int, passes the address of the array into print int, comes over here, so B is going to point to that one. But take a look. It only shows 10. You got that? It only shows 10. So that's actually a message to us. We'll find out soon what I mean by that. So it only shows the first one. But when I actually go, went over there, it showed all the, all the five things. Remember that. All right? So now, so B is actually pointing to the first element, which is fine. So when I come in over here and I say install, start printing B1, then it's going to actually print 10. Then, sorry, B0. Then when it's B1, then it becomes 20. So it prints 20, 30, 40, 50, and gets out and goes back in. Are we okay with this? Now, there's a problem in here. What's the problem? The problem is that 
problem is that debug, stop debugging. So problem is this. Problem is that the thing jumped down. All right, the problem is if I have another thing over here, say int um, d e, and I have over here seven elements, all right? Now in here I'll go 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, and 700. So I have seven elements in there, right? If I want to use print ints, ints, stupid compiler, okay, print ints, and I write over here uh, e, and I'm passing e to it. So when we already know that we, uh, when we actually run this, so I'm going to go again F10. Uh, come down over here. And so we know that when it prints the first one, life is beautiful. It actually prints those five, right? But when e is passed through this one, okay, although b is now pointing to 100, that is the first element of e, but when it's going to go printing it, how many times it's going to print it? Five times. Damn. I, I had seven. Now it's five. What do I do? How can I tell to print int how big my array is? The answer is you can't. C language is incapable of knowing what is the length of an array. It just can't. The it's, it's one impossibility. So don't even think about, it. can I do this? Can I do that? If you heard of something like size off, can I do this? Don't. It cannot, literally. So it's a period at the end. Okay, it's not some kind of a metaphor that I'm trying to make. Okay, so what happens? What do, what do I need to do? To be able to make a function capable of, capable of uh, printing or going through an array for any reason up to certain size, is to give it the size. That's all. Okay? So in here, my print int must carry the size with it. So in here, I can say less than size. And when I actually want to deal with this thing, I can say print the A, the element size is 5, print E, and that's 7. And now when I run this beautiful program of mine, it actually prints them properly, one five and the other seven. Are we okay with this? So we understand that arrays, we understand that arrays don't carry their size with them. Are we okay with this? Problem one, problem two, all right. So, Next thing, say I do something like this over here, unintentionally. Uh, let's, let's go back. All right, so let's save this. So that's uh, zero, 01. Passing array to function dot c. Okay. I'm leaving that thing in case I need it later on, but let it be for now. We'll see what happens. So uh, let's say we are talking about this a thingy, okay? And I'm just printing it twice. Let's say in this function, by mistake, I am doing some kind of a calculation or something like that, and I overwrite this something and it's a piece of array over here. Okay, so when it's actually printing it, it's going to set the element to zero. If that happens, although print int over int over there is actually printing it twice, but see what happens the second time. Why did that happen? Because A and B are sharing the same array. They are not a separate thing, right? They are literally pointers. 
Okay, because it's a pointer, it's holding the address of the target. So if I change the target by mistake inside my print int, I am ruining the original data. Are we okay with this? Now, there is a way that we can actually protect us from ourselves. How? You can always say, okay, print ints. What is the logic behind print ints? When you say print ints, what does it mean? If you say print this, it means change this? No, you just read it, print it, copy it, whatever you are doing, right? So if the action logic of printing in a sane mind says that it's not supposed to change, correct? If that's the case, you can always enforce that by adding a const behind the pointer. So what happens now, take a look at b over here. Const int b, expression must be a modifiable value. What the heck you're doing? So essentially, the compiler won't allow you to do such a thing. Are we okay? All right. Pardon me? Yeah, it won't even compile. See? Control F5. If I comp it says build error, and I'm going to say no, and it's going to say expression must be a modifiable value. What are you doing? Oh, that's okay. Fantastic. So in here, I actually don't write. I'm going to write this. Array to print. Pring. Print. Print. Yeah. Prototypes, they don't need the name of anything. You can just write like this. But if you do that, you're the worst person ever walked on this earth. Why? You have to use this opportunity to make your function that do use the opportunity of prototyping to identify what your function is and what does it do. If I say print int int array, this is okay. But if you have functions that the arguments don't relate exactly to the, what the array is, always use the opportunity to put, it, put a name over there. You're not going to use that name. Don't worry. If you put a long name over there, you're not gonna, you can just put it B in size as you, as, you see I, I, as you saw I did it over here. So put that name in a way so when somebody looks at your prototype, they say, yes, I know what it does. That's the array that is supposed to get printed. Are we okay? Are we okay? All right. So prototype inside the argument doesn't need to be same as the Not at all. You can just completely remove it. I, I can actually, first let me remove So I'm going to comment this one so I can compile it. I'm going to say const will prevent this. OK? So. Uh, now, see, I'm going to just remove it and remove it and run it. Works perfectly. I don't need to write anything over there. So basically the compiler, when it starts running, so it's navigate through the name of function. Not, not the name of the function. Ah, oh, let me tell you what's going on. To receive something, you need a proper container for it. It doesn't matter what is the name of your container. If you go to a coffee shop and give them an envelope and say, put coffee in here, they're not going to do it. Because envelope and coffee don't go together. You can put a paper inside an envelope. You follow me? The fact that you have an envelope, it means you're going to put a paper in it. If you get a cup to a coffee shop, and say, put coffee in it. Do they care if it's blue, red, big, small? They don't care. Name and identify, um, identities of your cup, it's not important. The fact that you must have a cup to put coffee in is important. And that's what you are saying. If you just remove this from here, OK, you are telling function print ints should receive an integer array. And that's what's important. What is the name? Who cares? As long as it's an integer array, I'm fine. If you put over there double, it's not going to accept because it doesn't match what you're writing down here. But if we remove the size, so it's same. Like no, yeah, of course, the size. If you remove the size, as long as you're passing an integer, that's fine. But nobody knows what's that integer now. Compiler does it. Compiler is an idiot thing. Compiler doesn't know size means size. Compiler just want an identifier for a variable. 
you name it properly, so three days later, when you look at it, you know what the heck is going on. I could have called it I, and it would still work, right? So you have to name it properly so you do remember it. When you are putting a prototype for a function, compiler doesn't give rats behind what are the names over there. It only needs the types to identify how to call the function. When it looks at print int, it says, okay, the first argument must be an integer array, and the second argument must be an integer. What are their names? We don't care. So every time you recall, uh, recall the function, the compiler just look at for the name of the... Name of the function, function. and to see if the, if the types are a match. Yeah, that's all. Are we okay? Yeah. All right. Now, what you said was beautiful. C language actually looks only for the name of the function. Later on, you're going to go to C++. You're going to learn something new on that. Okay? Be, be ready for that. All right. So I'm going to put it back the way it was. So, so it actually, like, so when you put something like that, you're actually helping me. You are giving me your program, and I looked at your prototype, and I don't need to go and check and walk through the source code to know what the heck is going on. I simply look at, and actually it's a better thing to do something like this over here. Actually say array size. So to actually mention, make it as descriptive as possible. Are we okay, everyone? So now we know what the const over here is for. Oh, and in here I have to put a const. You saw that it compiled, right? Even when I didn't put that one. Because this compiler is very forgiving. If you take it to matrix, it's going to poop. Say, what the heck is going on? Like, it's supposed to be a const, but different compilers act differently. But always try to be precise. In your... So essentially, the best way to actually write a, a function is to copy the prototype, paste it over here, then change the names and stuff. So we make sure that you have exact uh, types of uh, 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 argument list. Are we OK with this? Are we okay? Now, we can actually use this feature that if you change something in a function, the target changes to our advantage. How? We can actually, we can actually find the mouse first. we can actually have a function that its job is to actually read an array and put values in it just by passing the name of the array. And the logic for it is exactly the same. So essentially, when I do something like this, I simply say read integers, and I'm reading the integers, and it has a size. I get the integers one by one. I go through it. I'm going to say printf whatever, some kind of a prompt for us to see uh, which one we are entering. And then in here, I'm going to say uh, uh, get an integer and put it in the address of the element. So everything works exactly like we were supposed to see it. But there is one thing over here. This int cannot be constant anymore. Remember that. Okay, because now your intention is actually to change the thing. So now we could actually, pardon me? Line 19. Okay, thank you. Line 19. All right, and let me just do something over here. Oopsie. Just a second. 